Hello, I want to work today on using a velocity versus time graph to solve problems where I could calculate an acceleration, I could calculate a displacement. So using the velocity versus time graph, I can solve for unknown quantities about this motion. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, first example, you're riding your bicycle at a speed of 10 meters per second, you coast to a stop in 20 seconds. Now, things that I could find out from this is what was your acceleration in that time? How far did you travel? Now, always my first move whenever I am doing this sort of problem solving is to draw my velocity versus time graph. Now, I selected here, um, I, I'm showing prior to a time of zero seconds right here, uh, at the origin is a time of zero seconds, a velocity of zero meters per second. Let's be consciously aware this is a velocity versus time graph, not position versus time, but velocity versus time. Now, if I was riding my bicycle at 10 meters per second, um, we don't have any information about like how long have I been riding at that speed. And so we could think about there having been a graph like steadily at 10 meters per second or something like that to show that I was always moving at that speed, except we don't really have any information about what was happening prior to hitting the brakes. And let's notice that the questions aren't about the motion prior to hitting the brakes. So we really don't need that detail. We don't need that information of the, uh, the part of the graph before. So for solving part A, I removed that little horizontal line because we don't really need it for our problem solving. Now, in order to find the acceleration, we know that acceleration is the slope of a velocity versus time graph. So I'm gonna look at the slope. Now, looking at my starting, I started at 10 meters per second, and I drew a line that slopes down at a time of 20 seconds is when I reach zero meters per second. And I know that I'm at zero meters per second. It wasn't written out as a number there, but coast to a stop. And when I'm stopped, I have a velocity of zero meters per second. So my graph slopes steadily down from 10 meters per second at zero seconds to zero meters per second at 20 seconds. So to calculate my slope, my ending velocity was zero, my starting was 10 negative was positive 10 meters per second. So I subtract my ending minus my initial. I subtract my ending minus initial time. So my slope then is negative 10 meters per second divided by 20 seconds. That divides down to to get one in my denominator. Then I have a uh, negative 0.5 meters per second for every one second, or negative one half of meter per second every second. And we could also write this as negative 0.5 meters over seconds squared. And when you look at written text, you'll often see it written that way. Um, it's easier to write that slope of the acceleration, negative 0.5 meters per second divided by seconds. We're dividing by seconds twice there. Take meters, divide by seconds, divide by seconds again. And so mathematically, uh, meters over seconds squared is correct. And if you look at your linearized graph, when you graph position versus time squared, for an accelerating object, we actually had a slope of meters divided by seconds squared. But meters divided by seconds squared for the vast majority of people I've ever met doesn't really make sense conceptually. What are you talking about dividing a meter by a, the square of a second? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we're dealing with something that's mathematically accurate, but in terms of making sense out of things is much harder. I strongly prefer, um, when I'm new to thinking about acceleration, I strongly prefer to write it as this fraction. Even though it's harder to write, it's a whole lot easier to make sense out of what does it mean, because this fraction means this acceleration of negative 0.5 meters per second per second is saying that for every second that this bike is coasting, it loses, negative sign, it loses 0.5 meters per second of velocity. Or every second that this bike coasts, the velocity decreases by 0.5 meters per second.
So it's a whole lot easier, I think, to make sense out of what does this mean when we are writing our accelerations out in this longer format of negative 0.5 meters per second for every one second. But it is mathematically correct to write 0.5 negative 0.5 meters per second squared. Now, if I wanted to answer part B, how far do we travel in these 20 seconds? Something that we studied when we were learning about constant velocity motion was that the area in between the graph and the axis was always equal to the displacement of the object. And this is still true. So I shaded in pretty badly, but I shaded in in yellow that shape in between the blue line that represents the graph and the axis. And so if I'm trying to find the displacement from zero seconds to 20 seconds, then I'm taking the area from zero seconds to 20 seconds. And the shape of that area is a triangle. And something that we learned sometime when we were younger is that the area of a triangle is half times the width of the triangle times the height of the triangle or maybe you remember half times base times height doesn't matter what we call the the width of that width or base or whatever but we multiply half times one dimension of the triangle times the other dimension of the triangle and i'm writing here delta x Let's remember that delta x is the change in x, where x is position. Delta x, the change in position, is displacement. So displacement is the area of that graph. And the area of that graph, it's just a triangle. Half times we have a triangle that's 10 meters per second tall times 20 seconds wide. And when we do that math, half times 10 times 20, um, I can do that in my head. If I do the half times 20 seconds, that's 10 seconds. 10 seconds times 10 meters per second gives me 100 meters. How far did the bike go? The bike traveled 100 meters. By the way, looking at the math with these units, uh, we had a little bit of a struggle when we thought about that in the past where we were solving uh, meters per second times seconds to find the area of a box on a velocity versus time graph. Um, but meters divided by seconds and then multiplied by seconds. In this situation, those seconds do divide out. We have one in the numerator, one in the denominator. And so meters divided by seconds times seconds works out to just meters. So how far did we go? We're looking at the area of that graph. What was the acceleration? We're looking at the slope of the graph. So by thinking with a velocity versus time graph, Slopes and areas actually tell us a lot of information about a velocity versus time graph. And honestly, for problem solving from introductory physics through uh, more advanced physics, even you know like university level physics, a velocity versus time graph is one of the most powerful tools that we can use for problem solving. Area gives us the displacement, the slope gives us acceleration.